Hello, today I will be going over an example project schedule risk analysis model. This model is available in the model risk help file. The goal is to talk just a little bit about project risk analysis, why it's useful, and demonstrate some model risk features that you may find helpful in your projects, whether they're risk analysis for projects or for other areas of risk analysis. In this particular model, we have a construction firm that is building a silo. Several of the pieces of the silo are interrelated, and then and the goal is to try to understand what will be the total duration of the project and what's the uncertainty around the duration. So this particular project has three main pieces. It has a main building, a left wing, and a right wing. And then it also has a fence going around the outside. The main building, the left wing, and the right wing can all be constructed simultaneously. However, the fence cannot be built until all three of the main pieces are completed. So within each main piece there are also some subtasks, building walls, building roofs, etc. Those must be done in sequential order as listed here in the model. In project risk analysis, both for schedule and for cost, expert opinion plays a very important role. The reason is that in most cases when you're building a construction project or estimating costs or schedule, it's for a project that is unique in and of itself. It's never actually been done before, and so it's very hard to use lots of historical data in order to uh, make estimates about how long each piece of the project will take. There are a number of ways to represent expert opinion and a number of distributions, I would refer you to the model risk help file again for details about many of those different options. One of the most popular ways to represent the uncertainty around schedule duration or project cost is with a distribution called the PERT distribution. The reason is that experts often give their estimates in the form of a minimum, a most likely, and a maximum which our experts for our example project have done. And then a PERT distribution is used. We can show an example of the PERT distribution for building walls in the main building. The PERT distribution is used because it can be completely specified using a minimum, a most likely, or mode, and a maximum. And so in our case, for all of our estimates, we're doing that. What we've done then is for each of the main buildings, we've added up the total amount of time. Then we take the maximum of those three, the largest of those three values, add them to the value for the number of weeks required to build the fence. That's our estimate for each trial of our simulation. We can also see that here graphically in this chart where the blue task, the blue line represents the first task, the magenta line represents the second, and the red line represents the third for each of the main pieces. Then we pick whichever of the three main pieces of the project is the longest duration and add to that the duration to build the fence. If I hit the F9 key, which recalculates or takes a separate, a new sample from each of the distributions, you can see how it is uh, uh, you generally using always the longest duration piece and then adding on the duration of the fence. Let's go ahead and run a simulation of 5,000 samples so we can look at some of the results. While that's going, I'll just mention and remind you that what we're essentially doing here is for each trial of the simulation, we're taking a sample from all of the distributions within our model, and then we're looking at the result, remembering the result, and repeating it over and over and over. Essentially, we've done 5,000 what-if examples of this particular project. So the results window has come up when the simulation is over. And what we see here first is something called a histogram. What it is essentially representing is for each along the x-axis is the total duration of the project. And for each of the particular numbers of weeks, we can look along the y-axis to see the probability of the project lasting that particular length of time. 
One thing to note if we look at this graphically is that it does seem to be that the right-hand tail, the tail that represents the, the possibility of having a longer duration for the project, seems to be pretty long or longer than the left-hand tail, and we can see that a bit more about that in a minute. Another interesting piece of information in project risk analysis is called sensitivity. In model risk, a very nice feature for for building sensitivities or understanding sensitivity is a spider plot. What a spider plot does is essentially tell you of the inputs in the model, and we've designated as inputs the total time for the main building, the left wing, the right wing, and the fence. Of the inputs for this particular model, this green line or the one that has the highest slope is the one that is driving the largest amount of variability in the, in the result or in the output. In this case, it's the total time needed to build the left wing of the project. So for instance, if, if we wanted to reduce the variability or the unknown piece of the duration of the project, what we could possibly do is go back and look at the estimates for the left wing of the building or try to understand what's really creating the uncertainty there, eliminate that uncertainty or reduce it in order to mitigate the uncertainty we have about how long it will take for the duration of the project. Another interesting piece of information when doing project risk analysis are the statistics. And I'll just point out a couple of things here, and that is that within this model, if you add up all of the most likely values for all of the different pieces of the, of the project, you get about 17 weeks. But in fact, the mean or expected value from this project is actually 19 weeks and the maximum was as high as 27 weeks. And so this is really why uh, so often projects tend to go either over budget or over schedule, is because when not using quantitative risk analysis, what's often done is take people take the most likely value for all the different phases, add them up, they get the number 17 in this case, and then that's what they report as being the, uh, the number that is representing the duration for their project. When in fact, when you do quantitative risk analysis, you can understand that, wow, it could be as high as 27 weeks, and that the average is actually going to be 19 weeks. And so in most cases, it's going to be higher than the most likely, uh, the most likely value. Not very nice feature of model risk. We've got, we see here the results window. And if, for instance, this was an analysis you had done and you wanted to report to your customer that it was really going to be an average of about 19 weeks and it could be as high as 27 or possibly higher weeks to complete the duration, you could click the Save button, save this as a file, email it off to your customer, your client. Your client can go to the Vose software website, download a small free application for viewing these results, and then they could also see all of the different uh, results that you have generated here, as well as any other types of uh, results available that uh, might be of interest to them. So I'll go ahead and stop there. Again, if you have uh, questions, if you'd like to see the details and download this particular model, I'd encourage you to go to the model risk help file. If you have a license, either a full license or a trial license for model risk, it's available simply by uh, clicking the uh, question mark on the model risk tab in the model risk ribbon. If, in fact, you do not have a license, I'd encourage you to download a 30-day fully functional free trial. You can access that free trial from the Vose software website at www.vosesoftware.com. I'd also encourage you to contact Vose Consulting if you're in North America or South America for sales or support issues. You can contact Vose Consulting at www.voseconsulting.com.